today we are going to study section 3 of chapter 3 uh, which is about uh, wave motion we are going to define the wave motion first we are going to start defining the wave motion by uh, water waves this is a still water the uh, surface of the water is not wavy, not disturbed as you see. This water is called a uh, still water flat. Surface is flat. But if uh, a rock or a piece, uh, a drop of water is released onto the surface of the flat water, you are going to see the safe surface to be wavy. This water is called disturbed water. And if you drop a pebble, onto the surface of the water this uh, pebble uh, it's a piece of rock can cause some disturbance on the surface of the water and uh, we will observe that this disturbance uh, starts to expanding from the point where the pebble hits this is the point where the pebble hits and expands in all directions as you see it's moving in all directions onto the surface on the surface of the water Disturbance starts from the a point where the pebble hits and expands in all directions along the surface of the water. This uh, disturbance uh, travels outward in circular pattern, as I said, away from the original disturbance. And this traveling disturbance on the surface of the water is known as or named as in physics as wave, traveling disturbance. As wave passes, uh, Objects or particles of the surface of the water vibrate up and down and back and forth in vertical circles. Assume that there is a ball on the surface, stain on the surface of water. As wave travels, you will observe that this uh, object is full, uh, moving a circular path uh, up, down, back and forth, but this object has no net displacement. Assume that there is a um, there is a, a leaf on the surface of water. As wave passes by the leaf, leaf undergoes no net displacement. As I said, leaf uh, moves up and down or back and forth, but again stays where it is. Then, in short, we can say that wave motion, in fact, is uh, vibration vibration of the molecules vibration is transmitted vibration is transmitted transmitted but particles stay in their place particles stay in their place in their place that's why they don't uh, displace this is wave motion now, if particles are displaying this is not called in physics a wave it's called a flow if molecules of a medium is displacing from one point or two, just like a river it is called a flow but in wave motion no they don't display only they vibrate up and down back and forth but they their net displacement becomes zero and uh, a medium is uh, all, not always needed for a wave motion medium what is medium first let's understand this Water is a medium for uh, this wave, this, this disturbance. Sound is a mechanical wave. Air is a medium for disturbance. Earthquake is a uh, mechanical wave. Earth crust is a medium for the wave. Or wave on a spring. Spring is a medium for this wave. Um, then uh, any wave which needs the medium in physics is named as mechanical waves we have some waves uh, which do not need a material medium those are called electromagnetic waves mechanical mechanical waves cannot travel in free space which at which there is there is no uh, molecules but electromagnetic waves can travel so light radio waves ultraviolet infrared rays all they can travel in a place which there is no medium so all they can travel in free space because in free space no medium so electromagnetic waves do not need a material medium but mechanical waves need a material medium so water waves needs water 
sound waves needs air if no air molecules so you cannot communicate by uh, sound earthquake waves need earth crust spring waves need spring but electromagnetic waves waves need nothing and uh, types of waves flipping one end of a tau drop generates a pulse this shape is called pulse when you lift your uh, hand uh, up and down in here so you produce a pulse and if this pulse is traveling this traveling disturbance is called pulse wave a single traveling pulse in physics is called a pulse wave but if you continue shaking one end of the rope up and down continuously and moving one end of a tau drop up and down repeatedly a periodic wave is produced if you move one end of the top uh, uh, rope up and down repeatedly this is defining periodic motion repeated motion you now if uh, the end of the end of the rope is uh, in periodic motion then you are going to produce a wave which is periodic wave just like this one as you see this end is moving up and down so and then producing a periodic wave there are so many pulses one after another all they are traveling in one direction so this is a picture of the periodic wave in a rope as you see there are several pulses when you move your uh, hand up these pulses are produced when you move your hand down those other pulses are produced and they are moving one after another this traveling disturbance is known as periodic wave and every wave carries the properties of its own source uh, for example in this picture there is a vibrating blade blade a uh, vibrating blade is an elastic object so when you attach the rope to this vibrating blade uh, because blade in here is the uh, source uh, a vibrating blade a blade vibrating up and down produce a wave on the string this is the source blade is vibrating if blade is vibrating with simple harmonic motion so it's the source which means source is vibrating with simple harmonic motion then uh, every point on this uh, rope will also vibrate with simple harmonic motion so vibration of each point on the string will also be simple harmonic because every wave carries the property of its own source this is wave so a wave whose source vibrates with simple harmonic motion in physics is called a sine wave why is it called sine wave because the graph of the sine x and the shape of this a sine wave produced on a vibrating string by the vibrating blade is very similar this is shape of this wave is very similar to the shape of a function which function sine function y is equal to sine x that's why this wave is named as sine waves but we shouldn't forget all these waves can be produced by a vibrating source with simple harmonic motion the blade must vibrate with simple harmonic motion then the shape of the rope is going to be a sine wave and uh, also waves uh, can be uh, classified according to the direction of the vibration of the particles there are some waves uh, particles vibrate perpendicularly to the direction of the wave motion just like this example as you see the particles are vibrating up and down however wave is traveling in horizontal vibration is in vertical so they are perpendicular to each other so these types of uh, waves are called as transverse waves and all electromagnetic waves are transverse waves but some uh, particles, some waves have particles which are vibrating parallel to direction of the motion. As you see, vibration is in horizontal, wave motion is also in horizontal. So these types of waves are called longitudinal waves. Best example is sound waves. And uh, 
Waves can be represented in coordinate system by we can locate a wave pattern on a, a coordinate system. If you locate a wave in a coordinate system, that uh, shape is the, or that representation is called waveform. We can represent both transverse and longitudinal waves in a coordinate system. We can uh, first we are going to talk about the transverse waves. How can we represent transverse waves? in a coordinate system uh, the waveform that represents the displacement of each point on the wave at a single moment is for example this one you are going to this is, there are so many different points at different positions as this periodic wave is moving on a string so when we locate this wave uh, in a coordinate system x y coordinate system and representing y axis as the displacement of the particles from the equilibrium position this is equilibrium position and horizontal direction is this uh, displacement well, direction of the velocity direction of the uh, motion of the wave so this is the how we represent the uh, transverse wave in a coordinate system and this shape is known as waveform according to this waveform uh, we are going we can define uh, the wave one of them is equilibrium position this is the natural position of the medium there is no vibration equilibrium position is that no vibration but when waves uh, this medium vibrates and produces a disturbance there are two specific points we should know one point is the highest point above the equilibrium position which is no crest this is one crest this is another crest and the lowest point below the equilibrium position is called trough this is one trough this is another trough and second one a transverse wave we measured in terms of vertical distance and horizontal distance in vertical uh, maximum displacement from the equilibrium position is known as amplitude so distance from the equilibrium position to a crest it is the maximum displacement in one direction so amplitude positive a or uh, maximum displacement in opposite direction so negative a so both are called amplitude of this wave amplitude of this wave and here we can uh, draw the equilibrium position so this is equilibrium position this is amplitude that is another amplitude so maximum displacement from equilibrium position is known the amplitude of wave which is very similar to the definition of the uh, amplitude in simple harmonic motion and wave transverse wave also can be measured in terms of uh, horizontal distance distance from the the wave that travels during one cycle or distance between two similar neighboring displacement are known as one wavelength so distance from crest to crest or distance from trough to trough is measured as wavelength this is one wavelength one lambda crest to crest also one wavelength trough to trough so it is distance between two adjacent similar points of the wave such as from the crest to crest or trough to trough so from one crest to another crest or from one trough to adjacent trough that distance is known as the wavelength of the wave and uh, we are able to locate longitudinal waves in xy coordinate system as well we are we can also produce a waveform for longitudinal waves pumping a spring back and forth produces compressed and stretched regions uh, this is the compressed regions the coils of the springs are tighter in some regions it's compressed region or coils of the springs are looser in some regions these regions are stretched regions and if you look at here in the compressed regions the, the coils are closer so these regions are known as regions of higher pressure and density because they are closer and if you look at the stretch regions coils are uh, looser and then that's why these regions are known as the regions of low pressure and low density and lo a longitudinal wave can also be described by a sine curve but in a different manner if we draw density uh, graph or pressure graph we can also get a sine graph this is also a sine graph so every compression corresponds to crest of this graph and every 
stretch region corresponds to the trap of this graph. Another crest, another trap. This graph is also a sine wave, but this graph is known as density wave or pressure wave. So it is not displacement wave, but in transverse wave, the graph that we draw was a displacement wave. So the y-axis was displacement, but this is representing pressure wave or density wave. And don't forget the compressed region, uh, which is the region of the high pressure, corresponds to crest of the tent. This wave form, this density wave, and stretch region, which is low density, corresponds to trough of this density wave or pressure wave. Sketch each of the following waves that appear on a spring. One of them is a pulse. A pulse wave that is in transverse, you know that in transverse wave direction of the motion and direction of vibrations are perpendicular. So this is a pulse wave that is transverse. But pulse wave that is longitudinal, it can be just one compression or it can be just one single stretch. So it is a pulse wave in that is longitudinal. One compression, compression or or one stretch. One stretch and um, periodic wave that is transverse must contain crest and trough and crest and trough uh, several crest and trough points also periodic wave that is longitudinal must uh, contain several compressed and stretch regions one after another compressed stretch compressed stretch compressed stretch, stretch and so on so that is called periodic wave that is longitudinal and Question number three, label the following on each graph. Crest, trough, wavelength, and amplitude. The first one is a periodic wave that is transverse. A lowest point below the equilibrium position, which is trough. Another lowest point from equilibrium position is the trough. Or highest point from uh, uh, above the equilibrium position is crest. Highest point and uh, above equilibrium position is crest. These are graphs. And the wavelength is the distance from crest to crest or from trough to trough. This is wavelength. Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position in uh, transverse wave. But in longitudinal wave, it's a bit different. We are going to, if we want to determine which point is crest or trough or wavelength or amplitude, we should use density wave or pressure wave. The point which uh, pressure is maximum is a crest. So it corresponds to this point or the position, the point whose, uh, whose uh, pressure is minimum is trough. This is representing a trough. And uh, the next one is wavelength. So from one crest to another crest, it's called uh, wavelength. This is from one maximum pressure to another maximum pressure. So this distance is known as wavelength of the uh, longitudinal wave. So this is all for section three, first part. Uh, in the next lesson, we are going to uh, study the period, frequency, speed, and energy of a uh, wave. See you in next lesson.